<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Saturday Night Music Club number 34. I am Brett. <coughs> Lee Sanford. What up? James Mountain. Roy Shangri La. Raw Dog. Whoa! <laughs> All right. Okay. So tonight's theme was cassette tapes. We each had to bring a cassette. And uh, before we get into that, we're going to do our usual trivia contest. We're going to start things off with Jonathan Salisbury. Yes. Are you ready, Jonathan? Oh, yeah. Okay. Which company invented the compact cassette, or as we know it, the cassette tape, back in 1962? Sony? No. Maxell. No. Brent. I don't know. No. Come on. Casio. Incorrect. I got it. I know. Phillips. Uh, no point was given. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Released, like Jesse, released in 1980, this rock album. Yes is the second best-selling album of all time, second to Michael Jackson's Thriller, with 50 million claimed sales. This 1980s rock album, 1980 rock album. How many sold? 50 million. Three. Joshua Tree. 1980. Brent. Kiss Alive. Jake. So, 1980, 50 million. Yeah, no, I know. I was gonna say the Eagles, but. Is it Eagles? No. Okay. Jonathan. We Air Supply self titled album. Yeah, good rock album. ACDC's Black and Black. Uh, what? <clears throat> that's the second? We the second best selling album of all time. Yeah, we're we are are awful yeah. at trivia. Okay. Straight Brett. Awful. Brett. <laughs> we're so bad. Okay. Gold status is achieved by shipping 500,000 units in the United States. Correct. How many have to ship to achieve gold in the UK? Ooh. 100. Correct, two points. Give yourself two. All right, good one. All right. Finally. James Todd. Finally. All right, here's a good one for James Todd. This acclaimed electronic artist slash DJ slash producer slash record executive's father founded the Benny Hanna restaurant chain. What? That's ridiculous. Nobody knows. Think carefully. Everybody knows it's Moby. Think carefully. I don't think it can be Moby. Okay, this electronic artist. Okay. Is it Moby? <laughs> is that your answer? <laughs> Moby's dad started Benny Hanna. Okay. No. No, <laughs> no it wasn't. Who is Paul Anka? No. What? what? Okay. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, what I think is okay. that I'm a Moby fan too. So I okay, know listen that. again. I'll read it again. <laughs> This acclaimed electronic <laughs> artist slash DJ slash producer slash record executive's father founded the Bunny Hanna restaurant chain. Paul oh, okay. Oakenfold. No. Brett? Yes. I don't know. Steve Aoki. Oh, uh, yeah. I know That's that. my second and I actually, I said I actually used there. to share an office with Jim Beck. So you, oh, uh, that's embarrassing that you didn't know the answer. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's really embarrassing. Was that your question, James? Are we still friends? We're back to Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan, you ready? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Although none of the guys were related, each band member took the stage name of Ramon as their last name. Give me the first name of all four original Ramones and which two remain members throughout the band's history. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Jesse. Joey and Marky. What? There's four of them, so we need all four names. And that's not even their name. Okay, Brett. Joey and Johnny were the ones that stuck with it. Okay, so who are the other two? Then the other two are Tommy, who is the drummer <coughs> slash yep. agent. Yes. Then there's uh I know, I know what it is. I can't think of who it is. All right, sorry, Brian. Sorry. Can you repeat the question? Okay, <clears throat> so we need the the first name of all the four original Ramones names. They're stage names, and then which two members um, remain throughout the band's total history? Oh, I um, freaking know right, it, James. Dang it! Well, I'll let him say it. No, it doesn't count. <laughs> uh, so who is it? D. D. You were close, Brent. Okay. All right. So this goes to Jesse. This is so in Jesse's wheelhouse too. Are you ready? All right, who were the three, who were the original three members of NWA? Three, two, one. 
Brent. <laughs> Original uh, three. Dr. Dre. Uh, Ice Cube and Easy E. No. Yeah. James. Are we talking Original this is, three? This is really kind of a stumper because if we're talking like it's Dr. Dre, Dre Cube, and then um, he's been all over the place, all over the because <clears throat> honestly, DJ, like um, DJ Darius Rucker. Uh, no, DJ um, Darius DJ, Rucker. No, shh. Hold on, DJ um, Egyptian Lover was in there. There were so many no, DJ at the beginning. Um, original yeah. three. Yeah, I can't original. DJ original Rucker's three. Is. Lonzo is in there. Okay, Jonathan. <coughs> uh, Dr. Dre. Easy E and DJ Premier. No, not Premier. Really? Okay, here we go. Really? Dr. Dre, Easy E, and Arabian Prince. What? Yes. The original three. Which is Lonzo? Which no, is the original because... three? Yes, the original three. Ice Cube and MC Ren join later. Oh, yeah, MC MC Ren. And Yellow, right? Yeah, Yellow. All joined after. Yeah. Although primarily referred to by his surname, what is the first name of the British singer known as Morrissey? Stephen. Two points, give wow. yourself. All right, all right, James, the rock band Europe, <coughs> electro pop artist Robin, and the indie rock group The Cardigans all share what in common? They're all from Sweden. Two points for James. All right, all right. let's keep going with the next two questions. All right, here we go. Well, Jonathan. Hanson. Jonathan, popular blank <laughs> tape varieties were called C60, C90, C120. What did the numbers stand for? Oh, that's, that's easy. easy. Cassette? No! Okay. <laughs> Jesse. The minutes. The minutes. The duration. Uh, yeah, the total duration. Good job. One I was going to say Bear Grylls. I'm glad Jonathan got that because I knew everyone that he didn't grow up in the cassette era. So, he's, a yeah. he's a millennial. Yeah. millennial. Alright, Jesse, this is the last question. This one's see. super easy. Are you ready? Jesse, what was the purpose of the two removable tabs on the top edge of a cassette tape? Oh, that's easy too. To stop you from recording over the tape. Or to enable you to record over the tape. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Two points for Jesse. All right. So we ended up. Brent was the winner. What was the scores? I got four. Point this one. is the first one I've won because I suck at trivia that bad. What you get? Four point five. Four. Four. James. Two. Jonathan. <laughs> Zero. Jesse. <laughs> Three. Three. Like. Okay, guys. So the theme for tonight, as we mentioned previously, was cassette tapes. We each had to bring a cassette. So I'm going to start things off. <laughs> What I decided to do was to go through my cassettes and pick something that I bought on cassette back when I was a teenager, when the exclusive format that I bought was cassettes. So I went with the very first Jane's Addiction, the Triple X album, their debut album, the live one, released in 1987. Jonathan, take it away. Yeah, it was a pretty good tape. Uh, I know it was the first time it was actually a live album. That was. Uh, Going me in on the history of uh, Jane's addiction. What I do? Yeah, What's yeah, the I know that all chest stuff. there? What? Well, I'm just trying to keep it real. You know. You know so. Okay. Really? Yeah. So I liked it a lot. You know, there's a lot of uh, pretty good version <laughs> studio studio recordings that are like you know live and this is cool. So I give it a three. Okay. All right. Right on. I appreciate that, <clears throat> Jesse. Um. Nice and fuzzy. I actually, it's very memorable for me because my brother used to have this little truck and we used to drive around in it. And he used to play it, and for me that was like the only album that had like um, explicit content. So I used to love it, you know what I mean? But so your mom didn't like it. Our mom words. didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Brent, what'd you give it, Jesse? <clears throat> I gave it two. Okay. I give it a two as well. I said it's cool. Kids <laughs> addiction's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Good feedback there. Yeah. All right, James Todd. I got some support here from James Todd. He, could have I, get, he just said good, which is way worse <laughs> than me saying <laughs> no, it's cool. But I was just right. I was going to change changer for you. Well, hold on. No, you let me finish. Let's talk. If it was four. actually uh, nothing talk. shocking, that would be a life changer because I just admit it was a jam of mine that I loved. Sitting in the shower. Or in Whoa. Shower. Okay. What? Yeah. All right, we but, got um, some feedback here. Which was a different song. Um, I give it a three. I did write that it was good. I do like the album. I'm not, I haven't burned as many holes into it as Brett has. As I said, nothing shocking is more my skis, but it's also more my time period too. 
1988. It's more your time a year later. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> but they also like re released Jane Says in like 1992. He's like 10 years younger. 1988, it came on Nothing Shocking, the studio version, a year later. In 1988, he was five. No, I know, but they started playing it on alternative <laughs> radio. Yeah, in 1988. No, he was, I know, he was five. He wasn't listening to it again. Okay, well, I don't even know where he's going with this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so you gave it a what? <clears throat> I give it a three. Okay, the studio version of Jane says it's just phenomenal. Oh yeah, it's phenomenal. But uh, you know the live version, this album is just uh, damn. Yeah, I had to play this tonight. So I ended up with uh, when we tally these scores together, I ended up with a ten. Solid score. Thanks, guys. Uh, Jonathan, what did you bring this evening? I brought an album from a band called Woods. This is their 2012 release <clears throat> called Ben Beyond. Great band from uh, Washington area, you know, they're great, their new album that they came out this year is actually really good too, this is a lot different, you know, if you like lo-fi, psychedelic, you know, folk kind of stuff, you'll feel good this band, yeah. Alright Jesse, what would you think of Woods? <clears throat> I loved it, actually, I gave it a three, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, Brent? I gave Jonathan this tape. I also yeah, like yeah. this band. I you heard it. I think I showed him as a gift. I gave him as a gift, I think, I, think I showed him this band. Uh, so I, I have the yeah, vinyl yeah. I have the vinyl I'm version. Just, I like it a lot. I gave it a three as well. I agree with What label is this on? Some what's what's this? Yeah. It's their own label. Yeah, it's their own label. Yeah. 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 Uh, James, what do you think? So I heard Woods a while back. <coughs> you got three, Brent. Was it nineteen eighty eight? Yeah, three. No, it was it was nineteen eighty nine. No, um, I heard Woods a while back, and I remember listening to them and liking them, but I never actually ended up purchasing anything of theirs, and so I was actually really excited to hear what the album, like, this album sounded like, but for some strange reason, it didn't sound the same as I remembered it, or at least remember what they sounded like, so I gave it a two. Jeez. What? What? I was okay uh, it's gonna with sound it, all but, but this, was, this, this was a three, and honestly... This was not lo-fi. This was a no, really no great quality cassette. Uh, yeah. um, and there's like yeah. a Cobra on the front. Yeah. Cobra and, I, and you know, for real, they're, all their albums are under $15, stuff. which how many bands do you have now? I bought them. No, it's, 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 it's rare. It's rare. Fear does not yeah. exist in this dojo. Um, I really dug this one, so I gave it a three. Jonathan, this is a great pick. It was a it was fun list, and it was called Ben Beyond is the name of the album. This is from 02 or 12. You said? Yeah. Well, you gotta thank James Todd for this. He told me to play. I was about to play some like 80s, like hair yeah. metal type. No, no, no. Right. This was. Yeah. I ended up with an life. 11. Okay, Jesse. <laughs> I brought Operators. <coughs> yes. Yeah. And that's called EP1. EP1 by yeah. Operators. Yeah. Uh, Brent, what'd you think of Operators? I gave it a 2. I said it's cool like a fool. <laughs> Cassettes. James Todd. Operators. So I guess I'm the fool because uh, Jesse and I actually went and we saw them in concert. Uh, Where'd you guys see them at? We Valley saw them at Valley Bar. It was great. It was bueno. Uh, this um, recently? Yeah. 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 Like I thought you don't go to shows anymore, more James. I did for them. Okay. We went so, in and it was romantic. But well, I love the operators. I gave it a four. It changed my life. Wow. It really changed your life? Well, yeah. So you gave it a four. I gave it a three. I really, I really like it. I really like their new album. I've been enjoying that as well. So operators, um, let's take it out of Jonathan. What'd you think? Yeah, I dug it. It just kind of gave me memories last time I got my back wax. So you know, I'd give it a two. Kelly Clarkson. Wait, wait, let it, wait. Why did it make you think of getting your back? Because it's really wax. painful. This one. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, Jesse, you ended up with an eleven. Jesse ended up with an eleven. Wow. <laughs> That takes us on to Brent. What did you bring tonight? It's yours, isn't it? Stop it. All right, so I wanted to bring something that you could only get on cassette and nothing else. Uh, so I brought 1989 copy on Stress Records of Daniel Johnston. Don't be scared. This is probably the most lo-fi tape in the group tonight. James, stop. What'd you think of Terry Johnston? Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, um, so, yeah. I like I mean, what? <laughs> you yawning. Am I boring you? This was his southern brain. No, that was like getting it out of me. So, um, 
I gave it a two. I know that the sound quality of it two. being lo-fi is supposed to be a part of it and stuff like that. Home recording. But um, yeah, home recording. Bathroom. Recording. And it was, it was bathroom break. It was break. good. It was hard to listen to it over them talking continuously. Yes, oh, for normal you talk. Yeah, no, okay. You were all the. You guys were babbling. So yeah, you, you, you could roll your feet over it. Yeah, yeah, he was trying to feel. His feet I can't feel my feet thing. anymore for some strange reason. So everybody. Send, send your me. sympathy. Yeah, send your sympathy and hope so that get well I can feel my feet again. No, I gave it a two. I enjoyed it like a brisk swim in cold water. I, uh, what? That well, because it, no, it started reminding me of like when you dip your head underneath the water and then the music. So you, you know, when I dip, you dip, we play the sound. Okay. Yeah, I put your hand up. I like Daniel Johnston. In fact, my band, Audra. Uh, well, we, Audra cassettes coming yeah, to you soon. Coming soon. Well, when we. Open for Peter Murphy in whatever year that was. Jesse probably remembers 11, I think, 2011. 2011. 2011 we opened with uh, Daniel Johnson's <laughs> Devil Town. Um, he's a he's a peculiar cat. Um, the qua I mean, what's great about this is it's such a rarity. It's bedroom recordings, home recordings, but the quality is so low that. It's sometimes even even with conversation, even without the conversation, I think it really makes it difficult to actually hear the songs. But despite that, it's still a two contemporary. Uh, Ralph Macchio or Wesley Snipes? <laughs> a two. Jonathan, what'd you give it? So I think Daniel Johnson is a, is a genius. You know, I've seen him live a few times. Seriously, he has songs that like come from Austin. the heart. In Austin, no, that's genius. Limits. That's he's a box? genius. Yeah, he's, he's, he's must understood. No, he's at McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's where he got the cassette tape. Yeah, yeah. Got the I cassette got that in Happy Mail. No, I didn't. Anyway, he sings songs from the heart. He songs. He sings songs about oh, loss. Yeah. About so he's one of those artists. You know, they changed my life. Uh, he changed four. my life. I can that was good that. Yeah, real. Yeah. Jesse, would you? I gave it a do. <laughs> any uh, any discourse on it? It was lo-fi, and I appreciated that, but it's a little muddy. Yeah. Uh, Brett, your your Daniel Johnson scored a ten. All right. I brought the Freds. They're a uh, Kansas City, Missouri band. They um, <laughs> reference to the Flintstones. Um, they they only had about twenty of these made. They actually went to the Goodwill and found some Phil Collins. You can't hurry, love. I don't care anymore. Singles. That's a good song. And um, so there were all there was twenty of them. They were actually all already pre-numbered as well. And so there's twenty in existence. I got one of the last ones of this version, and then there's one extra version that's out there in the world that's with the Quad City DJs. Wow. Okay, so you know James gave us a lot of discourse before he played this about a half an hour of discourse, and I didn't like it before I even heard it because of the description because it sounded very ironic ironical yeah ironical but I ended up liking it more than I thought after listening to it because it was like a cross between the Misfits and James Todd's solo album <laughs> so I give it a two John. <laughs> yeah, I thought it, it sounded know, like Guar doing like warm ups at the Taco Bell circa 1992. <laughs> you know, I, and, and I, I heard that. Yeah, and you know, I get the two were describing good energy. I give it a two. All right, Brett. See, I thought it sounded more like Sam Hain doing Katy Perry songs at a Trump rally. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, that's what I thought it sounded like. So because of that, it got a two. Jesse, what'd you think? <clears throat> Sorry, James. I thought it was okay. Okay, so, uh, James, you actually scored an 8. So, in last place, James so a 10 or a 12. Eight. James with an 8. Tied for second, Brent and myself with 10. Dream Pop Jesse and Jonathan with an 11. Yay, we're the champions. James has a story. <laughs> Way back when... I used to work for a radio station. Everybody knew that I was a Depeche Mode fan. So one day my boss called me in and said, hey James, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. She was like, I got you a uh, meet and greet front stage to Depeche Mode. I'm gonna go with you and then you can bring a friend. And I was like, okay, so I brought my friend Adam and we get to go see Depeche oh. Mode and we get to meet him <laughs> during um, uh, Poe was playing or something. And so we're back there and we're, 
like we got to meet the Peshmer, they signed some stuff for us and we talked to them for a little bit and all this stuff. And so then Jane, who was my boss, she was like, hey, I want to take a picture. This was at the time where digital cameras weren't out, so it was still just the, uh, you know, the, the disposable type. So um, Martin Gore, Dave Gahan, and then Andrew Fletcher are all there and they get up to get a picture with me and my friend Adam and Jane was going to take the picture. And I'm going, I'm going to get my picture taken. Martin Gore, Dave Gahan. And so Martin Gore's got these feathers that are in front of, like, that are coming off his back. And so Jess. here it is to take the picture. Jess. Jane takes the picture. But at the time, Martin Gore, or Dave Gahan's, um, no, Martin Gore's feathers are like right in my face. So in the picture, what you can see is me smiling really ridiculously you can stay on camera. big, but these feathers in my face from Martin Gore. So there's a crazy drunk girl that's standing next to us and she keeps on yelling at um, Dave Gahan and he keeps on like telling her to shh, shh type of thing. And he kept on looking at us and we're like, dude, you just met us. You know that she's not with us.